Hi, my name's Cami, and online I go by Silver Eye Designs, and my hobby is embroidery. After finishing high school, I was bored during the summer. I had a ton of thread and fabric lying around. Embroidery was something I'd done maybe once or twice before. I just decided that the best way to spend my time would be um, embroidery. People generally are quite shocked. They're like, how can you do that for so long? That must be so time consuming and it looks so fiddly. And every time I just have to nod and say yes, but I still do it anyway. I literally wasn't expecting it. I basically did it because I enjoyed it. I didn't post it on Instagram or TikTok or anywhere. It was it was for myself and it was just a fun hobby. Progressively, my collection of embroidery started to grow and I thought I would start sharing it with people online. After I posted that video, I saw that I had gained traction and all these views kept piling up and it was absolutely overwhelming, but it also kind of gave me the confidence to like keep producing more videos because I was like, oh, people like this, so I'm going to keep doing it. And my TikTok blew up and the rest is history. <laughs> started off as making funny little stupid things. Once I started building a following, I tried to find themes that would interest people. So it's anime and manga. I really liked it when people ask questions. How did you do this? Or can you like give me some advice on this? I would occasionally get duets from people who would also do embroideries following my tutorials on like how to do this stitch. I don't think I had any right to give people like information. I was I was literally just following YouTube tutorials. I really enjoyed that sense of creative community. I think that's one of the best parts of TikTok. That overwhelming feeling that you've influenced someone to um, work on a passion that you have and share that interest, that was always amazing. Interacting with anyone who was interested in embroidery or anything creative was a really um, fun thing to do. Like, I would always fall in love with these people that I'd never met before, but some reason they felt a connection to me and wanted to try embroidery for the first time. The internet is not all bad, I would say. This is my studio. It used to be my dad's office, but then we converted it into a studio space for me to work in. I've got this little sofa, futon thing going on, some embroideries hanging out there. I've got my mannequin Lyra. I just started kind of putting up postcards and sketches and stuff on the wall just to fill up the space. This is everything that I probably will ever need to do anything. So I've got like pencil, paintbrushes, um, books for reference. My desk is probably where I do the most work. So I've got my uh, computer monitor there. I use my iPad to sketch up designs, um, either for my coursework or for my embroidery. And then, you know, just lighting to, <laughs> to adjust. When you're bringing your passion onto a social platform, you've got to expect um, criticism 
or um, stupid questions. No, that's not the right phrase, but um, ignorant questions, I suppose. TikTok, I was spending way too much time on, like I'd spend hours. So I just kind of felt guilty. I would spend more hours watching others and comparing myself to other creators. That was a huge problem. I was 16 and most people that I knew of who were doing embroidery um, and who I'd like from the connection with online um, were probably in their 20s or 30s. I was always comparing myself success-wise to them. It became a lot more stressful, I guess, as my popularity grew and I've got a knack of putting too much pressure on myself about these things. It helped to kind of step away from that because for a while embroidery became something that wasn't really enjoyable. I think TikTok often gets a bad rap because there is a lot of, there's a lot of variety and you know it's, it's an app that anyone can use so there's literally everything for everyone. After having a break I've kind of fallen back into it and you know remembered why I like doing it in the first place. This is where I say something inspirational like follow your dreams. <laughs> follow your dreams kids! I think this was when I first started TikTok and I was like, you know, do something the kids are gonna enjoy. So I chose um, memes and like popular imagery. I did a series of the Powerpuff Girls and two of them sold and all I've got is Buttercup here, but I like her, she's cute. Then I moved on to my anime stage, I suppose is what we'll call it. Um, lots of opportunity for line work and this was me trying to, I guess, um, get a bit more detailed and intricate um, patterns to uh, embroider. I'm really proud of this actually. It's, now that I look at it, there's a lot of little stitches that I'm quite impressed with. I think this one specifically really blew up on TikTok because um, My Hero Academia is a huge fandom and lots of people like it and it's a cool design. I really like it. This little guy is my smallest piece. Uh, I'm really proud of him. I was trying a new way of filling in colour in shape. Normally I use a satin stitch, which um, is quite dangerous, especially if you catch it on something, it will basically unravel the entire uh, embroidery. But um, this one I used tiny little stitches to fill in the area. And I'm also gonna show you the back. I really enjoy seeing the backs of people's embroidery work, because uh, it kind of gives you insight on in how to um, keep your back tidy and I, I think it's like a, a fun little way to see how people do their processes. Then this is moving towards my own design work. So I created a cross stitch um, design, basically by coloring pixel by pixel what pattern I wanted. So I made this cute little like sad, sad moon. And I'm really impressed with how it came out to be honest, um, because I see so many um, really intricate cross cross stitches online and I think they're stunning but I've always struggled with um, pixel art. Pixel art I've always found challenging because I'm all about those fluid lines and um, detailed little sections and cross stitch is in incredibly simplified I think depending on the scale you're working on. Last but not least is the project I'm currently working on. Since like childhood I've had an obsession with a clown. I think at one point my childhood dream job was to be a clown. So this is like a full circle moment. I created the characters and the colour palette and then I played around with placement. Um, working with circular frames is quite challenging um, because there's a lot of warping involved with the fabric moving. So if you're going to get a curved line it will probably end up a little um, wobbly but that's fine. So I'm trying to integrate that new colour blocking um, style that I showed in the small one with the tiny stitches and I'm really excited with how this will turn out. I just wanted to experiment with uh, different colours so creating a pretty hectic colour palette and including um, block shape and pattern um, because you know that's that's the clown aesthetic it's a lot of pattern and bold colour. Yeah, see you guys later. Bye.